Hi, this is Robert Clover Jr. and this is Robert Clover Jr.'s YouTube channel. You're watching a tutorial on the subject of how on a Mac to install, configure, and use YouTube-DL to download a www.concademy.com playlist or any other playlist. The concept taught here can also be used on Windows and Unix. Your first question is undoubtedly what in the world is YouTube-DL? Well, I'll tell you. It's a small command line program that you can use to download YouTube.com playlists. Okay, we'll try to be as quick and organized as possible. First, I'll teach you how to find YouTube-DL. Second, I'll show you YouTube-DL's requirements. Third, I'll show you how to download YouTube-DL. Fourth, I'll show you a recommended directory structure for organizing YouTube-DL uh, downloaded playlists. Number five, I'll uh, show you how to set the YouTube-DL permissions so it'll run. Number six, I'll show you how to store the instructions of YouTube-DL so they're easy to refer to. Seven, I'll show you how to analyze the playlist so that you can decide, for example, the best format to download its videos in. Number eight, I'll show you how to run a simulation prior to the actual download of the playlist so that you can make sure you have your command line parameters just the way you intend them to be, or at least in a way such that they won't uh, pick up. Number nine, I'll uh, download the playlist, walk you through that. Number ten, we'll summarize everything we've done and a few tips and pointers. Number eleven, some quick next steps as to what I'm thinking of doing in future tutorials that are uh, required as a prerequisite. And twelfth, a very short book advertisement. All right, topic one, how to find YouTube-DL. The best way is to Google for YouTube-DL, and in the results, choose the one whose URL is http colon slash slash rg3.github.com slash YouTube-DL. Okay, as you can see here, I've got uh, Google, and I Googled for YouTube-DL, and the first hit here is the rg3.github.com slash YouTube-DL. When you click on it, this is what you get. You get the YouTube-DL homepage. Now, in order to discern the requirements, what you've got to do is click on the About uh, button, and when you do, you get these instructions, and up here it says that it requires Python interpreter version 2.5 or above, and uh, it should work anywhere, Unix, Windows, or Mac, OS X. That's all you need to know about requirements. Okay, I have great news for you. Every Mac comes pre-installed with the exact correct version of Python that you need to run YouTube-DL. To prove it to yourself, go to the URL www.apple.com forward slash open source, as I have here. Uh, in here, this is a list of all the open source that comes packaged on every Mac computer. So we just do a search here for the word Python, and among the 10 hits, we get this one, which says that your Mac came pre-installed with Python version 2.55. And as you recall, YouTube-DL works with any version of Python 2.5 or greater as long as it's uh, less than three. So in sum, you're good to go if you've got a Mac, especially as I do this Mac Lion. All right, now to download YouTube-DL, you start back at the homepage of YouTube-DL, and you click on the Download button, which I'm now clicking in a new window. Now here's the Download page. Now here where it says 2012-02-27, what I do is I right-click and I click on Open Link in New Tab. Now it just opened in a new tab, and what you have in this new tab is a single file consisting of a Python program's source code. Now what I do is I right-click on this page, and I click on Save As and then I'm going to save it to my hard drive. I have chosen to put it into a directory, which I have chosen to be named YouTube-DL, and it wants to save itself as YouTube-DL.txt, but what you need to do is rename it to YouTube-DL-PY, which I have done, and I hit save. My download is complete. All right, so here I am in File Manager. I'm in my YouTube-DL directory, and you can see my YouTube-DL-PY executable. Now what I'm gonna do is change the permissions on it. To do this, I'm gonna right-click on the directory. I'm gonna say Copy YouTube-DL, and then I'm going to go to a terminal window. Now you may not know how to get to a terminal window, so if you don't, I'll show you real quick. You just uh, go into Applications, and from Applications you go into System, sorry, you go into Utilities, and from Utilities you just click on the Terminal app. Uh, voila, there's the Terminal app. I'll make that a little bigger for you. Now I'm gonna type CD for Change Directory, right-click and Paste, and um, because of the beauty of Mac, it pasted in the complete path, so now if I do a PWD, you can see I'm in the directory where uh, the YouTube-DL.py executable uh, resides. Now what I'm gonna do is a chmod command, chmod on YouTube-DL.py, changing the permissions to be 755, as I just did. And then when I do a list minus LSA on YouTube, uh, etc., you can see that the permissions, permissions are read-write-execute for myself, uh, read-execute for other members of the staff group, and read-execute for uh, none, of, none of the above. You might think of that as an incantation. The point is that you have to have the X flag set uh, so that it can execute as a Python program. Now to test it out, you simply type the name of the Python program, YouTube-DL.py, and I'll do the version command, and it tells me that the version is 2012.02.27, just perfect. Uh, the next command you might want to do is the help command, uh, which is dash dash help, which, curiously enough, uh, gives you the help. Now, I am a huge fan of Evernote. I learned about Evernote by watching a tutorial on the subject at my favorite educational website, www.lynda.com, spelled L-Y-N-D-A. Uh, what you're looking at on the screen is um, Evernote. And I made a note in Evernote entitled YouTube-DL-Mac. And what I did is I copied into my Evernote note uh, the, the output of uh, running the help command in um, that terminal window. So I have here the, the help, uh, you know, in a convenient format where I can refer to it. And uh, at the top I keep notes about uh, what I'm doing and, uh, you know, good commands and such. So I recommend Evernote for that purpose. In fact, I have a, a folder in Evernote called Software and a, a note on each of uh, various softwares that, uh, you know, have commands that I might not be familiar with uh, without review, such as Dropbox or My Point Lite or Evernote itself. Okay, now to get the playlist, you start by going to the Khan Academy page in YouTube. Once you're on that page, you click on Videos, then you click on Playlists. In Khan Academy's case, there are 57 playlists. You select the playlist that you want. In my case, I want Statistics. And when you click on it, uh, that playlist will come up as it has here. And then you simply uh, copy the URL at the top. That's the URL of the playlist. Then you, you go back to your terminal window, which, as you might remember, is still in the YouTube-DL 
directory, you type u2-el.py space dash capital F, and you right click and paste in the URL of the playlist. When you run it, what it's showing you for each video are the formats that that video supports, and it will run through every video in the playlist. When it's done, you can scroll back and decide which format you wish to use. So far, I've always chosen to use the MP4 format 360 by 640 resolution, which, is, which it shows you as format type 18, which means that when I do the playlist download, I'll tell it to use format 18. Okay, before we create the actual playlist for statistics, I want to show you a playlist I already made for geometry. You can see I made a directory called con PL geometry, and here you can see the contents uh, that I created. Uh, and what I want you to see most importantly in here is that um, I'm going to use a command that's going to prefix each uh, playlist video entry with a sequence number. And this is really important because these sequence numbers will allow you to watch the videos in the playlist in the order intended. Otherwise, if they just have the title, then of course it, you're not going to be watching them in the intended order. Okay, now I'm about ready to uh, run the simulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new folder, a subdirectory of YouTube.dll. I'm, I'm going to call it con underbar pl underbar statistics. Now having done that, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go into the terminal window and I'm going to say change directory, uh, right click, actually that's lowercase change directory, right click, paste the URL and doing pwd, you see I'm now in the correct directory. Okay, now I'm back at the command line, and I want you to notice that I prefaced the command with period, period, forward, slash, youtube-dl.py. What I'm saying is to execute the youtube-dl.py command from the parent directory, because I'm in a subdirectory now called conpl statistics. Now, the format that I've used here of the command is called the long format, because I'm using the dash dash form. It's easier to understand. So it says dash dash format 18, which is the MP4 format. It says dash dash title, because I want the output filing to have the title in it. It says dash dash auto number, which is how it's going to have those uh, sequence numbers at the start. It says dash dash retry 20, uh, the default is 10 dash dash ignore errors, and finally dash dash simulate. Now all I have to do is pass or copy in the URL of the statistics playlist, and I can simulate it to find out if I made any errors in the command format. All right, now here I am back in on the, uh, the page that has the playlist for statistics. Now here's a trick. Just before I run this command, I'm going to refresh the screen. And the reason I do that is that sometimes uh, YouTube will get suspicious if it uh, detects that your IP address is doing too many things. So if I refresh and it gets really suspicious, it'll throw up a captcha, which then you can manually fill in, and that will stop you from getting some uh, some YouTube-generated uh, errors uh, when you uh, run uh, the command line. So I, uh, I don't have any problems. I'm going to copy in the URL, go back to the uh, command line, and I'm going to right-click and paste that URL into the command that I'd already uh, set up, and simply hit the return key. And what it is doing now is it's running through the whole thing without downloading anything. That's why it's called simulating. And as you can see, it's working. So that's really all I need to know. Now, here I am back at the subscription, I beg your pardon, statistics playlist, and I'm just, for good luck, going to refresh the page one more time just to make sure that it doesn't throw up capture screen. It didn't. I go back to the command, I bring back the command, and this time I remove the uh, dash dash simulate so that when I hit the enter key, it's going to do it for real. So you can see I'm back spacing. I took out the word simulate, now I just hit the return key, and it's really downloading for real. And you can see, um, if I make it a little bigger, that it's uh, giving you a little status on each one as it uh, downloads and goes to the next. And this can take quite a while depending on how many uh, there are, but you can watch the progress in Finder as, as it runs, as I think I might be able to demonstrate here. So uh, here we are in the statistics uh, playlist uh, directory, and you can see that it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, going through and making more and more and more. And depending on, this could take 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, so we'll come back when it's done. Okay, it's definitely done. Now one thing I have to tell you is that when it's done, you have to hit the uh, return key to make the Python uh, program exit. So it's a little bit of an art to decide when it's done. Um, but you know, just use your common sense. When it's done, hit the enter key, and then you get this exit one message, and it repeats the command, which is just as well, because it was kind of hard to see the command the last time. Uh, and it's probably pretty important to know that one. So uh, I'm going to make it real big, and you'll see it says uh, dot dot slash YouTube dash DLL dot PY space dash dash format space 18 space dash dash title dash dash auto number. And uh, I'm just not too good at this. Then it says dash dash retries 20, and then it says dash dash ignore dash errors, and then the URL and you're good. You're finished. Over here in the finder, you've got a whole mess of videos just ready to be watched in the correct order. All right, in terms of a summary, there are only two things I want to do is uh, give you the, the last command I did uh, so you can really see it. And uh, the second thing is I want to show you what it looks like uh, when YouTube gets suspicious and throws up that captcha. Uh, this is from a prior run, but what you'll see here is that when I was running it, I was getting this message that says, uh, unable to download video info webpage HTTP error 402 payment required. Well, when I saw that, uh, that's when I went back to the subscription in the browser, and uh, when, when I refreshed, it asked for captcha. So I put in a captcha, and uh, then it said, okay, you're a real person, you're not a machine, and uh, I was good to go after that. So I just want to point that out. All right, now, in terms of ne next steps, there are two points to this exercise. Both of these points have to do with playing these playlists on an iPad. Now, you can play them on an iPad two different ways. One way is using Dropbox, and Dropbox works really well, except that you can't speed up the video. And my whole point in this is finding a way to speed up the video. So what I use is a program called, appropriately enough, uh, Speed Up TV, which I put on the iPad, and then, and it would take a whole other YouTube video to explain it, I am able to copy this playlist into Speed Up TV, and Speed Up TV on the iPad can then play these Khan Academy videos at double the speed. And that was the point of this. Okay, two quick things. As promised, uh, the book. Uh, there it is, Love Poems About Emma by uh, yours truly, Robert D. Glover. The only reason I'm wasting your time with this is um, the head of the Bowery Poetry Club in New York uh, is the one who recommended me to the publisher. And the publisher, he actually believes in this book, so I'm just telling you about it for their sake. Um, and now we're going to move on to the ending. Ending. The end. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.